what's up guys in this video underground way of lighting victor 6 using iray while getting drop the gorgeous results quickly and easily hi i'm Val camera founder of dreamlight so iray is amazing and very powerful but with power comes responsibility and iray is no exception what happens when you light with iray is the light starts to bounce around in the scene and interacts with everything and without knowing how and where to place the light, you can quickly end up with a real mess that looks even worse than when using the older 3D light render engine. First of all, there is a lot of options in IRA, including the built-in environment with sky and sunlight. And if you just scroll through here, you can just quickly get a headache. Not to mention all the other tone mapping options and all the other stuff available here. Now, on top of that you have the new light you've got the photometric spotlight and you have the photometric point light and all this is good stuff however if you're like me you prefer to have control ease of use speed of creation and gorgeous results so let me walk you through a much more easier and professional way of lighting that gives you much more control first of all here we have a scene with Victoria 6 we start off by adding a plain primitive one by one click on accept now iray features special shaders so you can change that plane into a light source click on the plane in the scene tab then in the surfaces tab you click on the plane once again then you head to presets choose shaders expand choose iray scroll down here on the menu and choose emissive once selected, you click back on editor here and scroll down and change to 6500 so we have a white light source. Click on two side light so it illuminates in both directions and you don't have to worry about angling right. So once set to 6500 here, you can play with the color, emission color, recolor your light if you choose to. All right, so what differs here compared to the environment light setup and the other lights we talk about is that you have luminous units. And one of them is CD M squared and the other one is KCD M squared. And pretty much they co-wrote together the luminance uh, value above. So if you choose K, it means 1000 times stronger and you can then have a lower number. Or if you choose the CD M squared, you can have a higher number. They do not affect how the light affects, how the light affects your scene. They are just different ways of co-working with the luminance, which is the strength of the light source. When it comes to lighting using these primitive, this plain primitive made emissive, is that you, because of the quick fall off, if you want to have a targeted, you know, local effect, you want to place the light pretty close to your character and bring down the intensity because of the close distance the light will have enough power to reach your character but not the entire environment so let me show you how this works here we can set the intensity of the light i'm gonna set it to 20,000. i'm gonna raise this off the ground i'm gonna zoom out so i can see what i'm doing here all right i'm gonna angle it so it stands. I'm going to turn it towards Victoria using the rotation tool. And I raise it off the ground. And angle it slightly down so we got a nice, nice 45 degree angle. Okay, I'm gonna put this light a little bit closer to her. From the top view, you can also see where the light is. It's right here. And we've got the camera here, just above Victoria. Okay, so back to our camera. And just before showing how this works, I'm gonna actually set, add a box around our scene. So we, I'm gonna see how the lights behave. You, I'm just gonna drop it down a little bit so we're not cropping the feet. There we go. All right, I'm gonna turn off the camera headlamp. Camera, let's go down here, turn off the kind of like a working light so you can turn it off when you don't need it. Alrighty, and we're gonna do a preview. 
So I'm gonna use render mode photo reel and I'm gonna head over here to NVIDIA iRay preview. And as you can see, it's super smooth and great looking. As you also notice, the light isn't hitting the rest of the scenery. It's short, the CD fall off is very short and it hits Victoria but doesn't hit the, the rest of the environment. So what I can do now is just slightly increase the intensity of the light. So you go back here, select the light in my scene, I can call it main light. All right. And I can change in the surfaces tab here, change the luminous here to a little bit more intense, like maybe 50,000. All right. Now, once you have one of these lights added that does the main job, you want to fill in the blanks, the dark areas. So you go ahead and add another one. Your primitive. I'm going to add a plane. One meter in size. Same thing. While doing this, I'm going to switch to texture shade again. I'm going to turn on my working headlamp. So I see what I'm doing. So pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to first rename it to Fill Light. I'm going to copy the settings of the first one onto the other one. So they're at the exact same position for now. And I'm going to move the other light from the top view and wireframe. So it's on the opposite side. I'm going to first rotate it. Then I'm going to move it physically to the other side. And I'm just make sure it's set correctly. There we go. And this light, I want the secondary light to hit the entire scene so it doesn't look that dark. So having the fill light selected here, I'm going over to surfaces. I'm going to click on here. Again, go to presets, iRay, emissive. Click on editor back again. Now I'm going to choose again 6500, so it's white. I'm going to change the lighting mode to uh, KCD. I'm going to scale this down to maybe 300. So let's do a test now. Let's go here. I'm going to just quickly save my scene. And let's do a quick test. I'm going to turn off my headlamp. All right, headlamp off. I'm going to go to NVIDIA Live Preview. Here we go. It's looking quite good. However, the extra light is much too intense. So we're gonna bring down to maybe 100. Let's see how that looks. Let's do 50. All right, so once set here, you gotta do a little bit of adjustments. Each scene is unique, each clothing is unique, each pose is unique. So you always have to tweak the lights a little bit but once you have them in place, you can see that the main light from the left provides the main lighting on Vicky. Often you want to match the direction of the face, while the other light is coming from the other side, filling in the blanks, giving a little bit more overall lighting to the scene at the same time. And it also gives you maximum control because you can control each and light individually, the intensity, the color, and the distance towards your object. And I use the very same approach to lighting the scene you're seeing right in front of you. As you can see, I have one light here that is set uh, right in front of the windows. So you have one strong light coming from this direction. Often you want to use a single strong light source that dominates your scene and you want to put it from the back or the side. Then I'm matching that from this direction by adding a similar light from the other direction. All right, that's it. That's how you can immediately start lighting your scenes in a professional way and get really good results starting right now. Now, if you like this tutorial, there's plenty more of where this came from. If you want to impress with your Dash Studio Ivory renders, then you want to grab our insane time limit Dash Studio Ivory deals. These are step-by-step -step video tutorials that cover everything you need to know to create stunning Dash Studio renders right now. So go ahead, click the link below, check them out, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.